Hey guys, welcome back to PC Building Simulator. We're back in the Asus ROG workshop and today we are here to talk about water cooling. Like this, you see it? You see it? You see the liquid? We're gonna do that. We're gonna do this today. We're gonna talk about how to do water cooling in PC Building Simulator. Um, I've actually a couple of requests asking for a little bit of help on, and pointers on how to do water cooling in this game. So we're just gonna go over uh, basically any configuration you really need. It's actually pretty simple, but I gotta say the first time I did water cooling in this game, I don't know, I got like confused too. So um, especially like if you're doing multi-GPU, it gets slightly more complicated, but yeah, we're gonna go over single GPU configurations like this one, which is quite attractive, I must say, um, as well as what happens if you add a second GPU, like we did in this one. And uh, we'll just talk about a few things that like matter in real life, maybe don't matter in the game, you know, stuff like that. So we're gonna do that by working on this computer over here. This is a build in the Cooler Master Master Case H500P, a great water cooling case. It has these massive like, I don't even know, I think it's like 200 mil fans, I don't know, it's, they're awesome. Um, and I managed to fit this big fatty reservoir in here. We've already got our motherboard rigged up with a Ryzen 2700X, a, uh, basically one terabyte uh, NVMe SSD from Corsair. We've got a 150 watt power supply from Corsair as well. And we got a bunch of RAM also from Corsair. Geez, Corsair fanboy here, right? <laughs> sort of. Um, yeah, but anyway, so we're going to talk about exactly how to do water cooling um, in PC building simulator, but also like in real life, I guess. I mean, these, these are same concepts apply. So, all right. So basically you get to decide and this is all for custom loop water cooling, I should add. Like you can always do an AIO um, in real life or in the game. You, uh, they're nice because it's all in one. You get the copper block with the loop and the radiator and the fans all in one. It's all packaged together. Usually like you'll get in the box, you'll have to throw the fans on the radiator, actually screw those on, mount the block with the correct mounting bracket based on what, bracket based on uh, what CPU socket you're using, and then you're good to go. So, you know, just make sure you have enough room. Like I have a 240 in my real life computer. Uh, I actually have this one except the 240. I wish it was this one, that one's huge. But anyway, um, so yeah, that's a great option as well if you don't wanna worry about custom loop because custom loop's kind of a pain. Like you have to make sure everything fits and things can leak and you know, you can potentially have to worry about um, like things growing in your reservoir. Like a lot of times you'll put like an anti-growth chemical in it to keep, you know, bacteria and algae and crap from growing in it. And you also have to think about um, over time how the loop can like kind of gunk up. It's more of an issue outside of the closed system, but that's what we're gonna build today. Um, AIOs are great too, and they work very well for several reasons. Um, but yeah, so if you wanna do custom loop, first you have to decide, do I want to do a custom loop just on my CPU? Do I wanna do it just on my GPU? Do I wanna do it on two GPUs? Do I wanna do it on a CPU? a GPU, a CPU, and two GPUs. So you have to think about that loop first. Um, the concept is the same no matter how many things you do. So basically, um, you're gonna always need a radiator, and the size of radiator that you can fit is gonna vary in your case. Um, this case can fit a 360 rad up top. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with this EK water block. Uh, no, I'm not gonna fit that. No, I really liked that tall reservoir. This is a thing though. This is a thing you run into um, with water cooling. And it's a lot scarier in real life because like you can't just, you know, find stuff for free. Like life isn't free build, so you have to plan ahead. Um, but we'll go ahead and put a radiator in here. And you're obviously gonna have to plan for the clearance of the fans. Now in real life, um, compared to this game, you would have the option in some cases of putting the fans on the inside or on the outside. So you can decide that. I don't know exactly how much clearance we have on this case in particular. Um, uh, yeah, I don't think you're gonna put, yeah, you would. You could not put fans there and you would not want to because they would not intake air well. They need the air to come into the side ventilation. So in this case, you'd want to keep them on the inside. Some cases you have the option of putting them outside, like, you know, if you, yeah, yeah anyway, so. This one, no. Also, you could decide if you wanted a push or a pull, like if you wanted them to exhaust or intake. In this game, the fans always face this direction. They always uh, exhaust. So right now, these fans are taking the air up and out. This rear fan is taking the air out. Um, and these, if I put fans in the, well, the fans in the front are intake. 
So this is actually not a bad configuration here, the way we have it. Uh, but you don't have that option in the game. You do have it in real life. And it's something you want to think about. But anyway, so you get a reservoir. I mean, you get a radiator. We got a radiator up there. We got our fans mounted. Cool. Good to go. You got to make sure those fans are obviously powered. Usually via a fan header on your motherboard or something like that. But you'll want to tie it to CPU temperature usually. Um, usually. Or maybe GPU temperature. You could decide. But don't, you know, don't do something else. Like, don't don't tie it to the rest of the fan speed or anything like that. Usually. Um... Uh, we need to go to a reservoir. Sorry, I'm trying to think. Thinking, hello. Uh, is this one too tall? Yes. Okay. No, you get to choose a reservoir. We've got lots of options. Yeah, let's do this one. This one's good. Okay. Great. So, we know that we're going to do... In my system, we're going to do a CPU, and we're going to do two GPUs. Or maybe we should just start with one GPU. I don't know. Um, so what you'll need to get the CPU ready, you obviously want to apply your thermal paste and then go and get a CPU block. And the block is going to be specific to whatever CPU you're using, what socket you're using. Um, <clears throat> so these are all going to, I need one that works for LG, or sorry, I need one that works for AM4 because we're doing a Ryzen CPU. So these are the options I have here. So, um, you know, choose one that you like. Choose one that's pretty. I don't know. Choose one that you feel like will, will do well thermally. So we're going to go with this one, the Alpha Cool block. And then let's go ahead and get a GPU installed as well. So in this game, it's really easy because these GPUs already have the water cooling blocks installed. In real life, you would need to buy a graphics card, take it apart, void your warranty, do that whole deal. Also buy a water block. Um, you would need to clean up the thermal paste on the actual GPU die. You'd need to probably put some thermal pads onto the block. Usually they come with those, and then you need to assemble it again. Get it all tightened down, and then you'd have your water block on your GPU. In this game, they're very simple. So um, we could just take like a 1080i or whatever right from here and slap it in our system. I think for... I like this. I think for illustration, this will be a... Ooh, we could do a vertical mount. Let's do a vertical mount really quick because I think it'll be good for illustration especially on this graphics card. And uh, yeah, but this obviously works for, you know, anyway, but, um, okay. So we've got our GPU ready. We've got our CPU ready. Everything's ready. We just need to get it all plumbed together at this point. So this pump reservoir combo is obviously what's going to provide the pumping to move the fluid. We just need now the pipes to, fluid, to uh, move the fluid through. So when it comes to this, you have a few different options you can do um, flexible pipe is a lot easier to work with in real life. It allows you to change parts out more easily. Um, it allows you to kind of like move things around. Like, you know, if you're doing rigid, you know, hardline tubing and you need to move this GPU out of the, out of the room, <laughs> out of the way for some reason, you would need to unplumb the system completely. Whereas if the tubing was flexible, you could probably move it without completely unplumbing it, usually. Um, but hardline looks really nice. So, you know, there's benefits, but let's see. I've actually not done a lot of flexible pipe. Ooh, no route. No route. Okay. Uh, there's apparently no route. Really? Okay. Well, we'll have to go through them here. Ah, there's a route. That's interesting. So, yeah, when you do flexible piping in this game, it just kind of routes it for you. So, makes it really easy wrap that all up okay so all right we talk a lot about i've had i guess a lot of comments about loop order in this game too and so what what i've heard what i've what i've what i've yeah read heard uh videos i've watched is that loop order doesn't actually matter that much you know some people ask okay well if the water comes out of my reservoir goes to my gpu then goes to my cpu am i aren't i just fe feeding my cpu hot liquid from the gpu and it's like Yes, but in general, the whole loop will kind of equalize. I know that it comes with the radiator, it does cool, but in general, the loop temperature is going to equalize and it's not gonna fluctuate that much between components. So, um, from what I've read, it's really not that big of a deal. And uh, J2 sent a really good video on it and he tested a bunch of different loop orders and basically said, eh, it doesn't matter that much. So, um, you can do whatever you want, but like I like to just kind of go in loop order that looks good and feels good. And usually, um, as far as direction, a lot of reservoirs will have direction. Like you can see, this is an in and this is an out. 
so we'll want to come out and we can really go we can go any direction we want really it doesn't matter we just need to get everything together um but for simplicity and cleanliness i think i'd probably go out and then i'd go into my gpu here though you can also see on the gpu it says in out which on some gpus it matters more it depends on like the flow plate and some of the flow plates are like directional so i guess this one really you would want to go the other way you'd want to go out the reservoir into the gpu and i see it starts getting ugly but yeah and then you, know, you could do it that way uh the cpu does not show any sort of care for in or out again some some parts don't so go like this we go to our reservoir water liquid true true liquid would travel through the reservoir and we could take it out this side and back to our this is a radiator I keep calling it a reservoir i'm so sorry uh and back to our reservoir. so really no rip 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 really seriously wow i feel like there's a way game you're just not trying very hard although that is a ridiculous bend i don't even understand that one Ooh, I've, this is weird. I've never done like soft line tubing, so I've never seen what weirdness results. Um, as far as the reservoir, which way you go in, which way you go out, it really doesn't matter. As far as I know, maybe some reservoirs care. I guess not sure. Really? Just don't cut the corner. What do you mean there's no route for flexible pipe? Oh my gosh, this is crazy. There, there are so many... Right here, right here. Ah. Oh my, okay, game, mm. all right. There you go. Any chance I can get my fan back in? Not that it really matters, I'm just, uh, I'm just kind of hung up on it now. Yep, okay, great, cool, great. So there you go, um, this right here would work at this point, then all you'd need to do is come in and put a little coolant in, pick your favorite color, fill it, let it do its thing, we see out. We're gonna go in the GPU, we're gonna see it come through the flow plate. Mm, that's not what that looks like in real life, but okay. That's too bad, because it's so weird. It looks way cooler, like, in real life, so. But there you go. Now our loop's full, you can power on your PC. And this one has a weird light on the GPU, but there it is, everything's cooled. So we've got CPU and a GPU all cooled as part of one loop with a 360 rad. So that's an example of how you could do it with one GPU. So I'm gonna show you how we would do it with two. Okay, so now we've got two GPUs installed, uh, obviously no longer in a vertical mount, and the same principle is gonna apply here. This time I'm gonna show you hardline cooling for what that's worth. Um, also, I didn't explain we have fittings, and you can do different kits. Some of the kits do like angled. You can actually do your kind of bends with the fitting, which is really convenient because you don't have to get out like a tubing bender. I don't think it looks as clean, but it is convenient, uh, especially in real life. And there's also these other EK fittings, which don't do bends, but I think it's the best personally. So I go with those a lot, but maybe we'll show the angled, the angled ones for, for a change. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and just do some clear rigid pipe. So I'm gonna again, just start with the reservoir. Sometimes it's just a place I like to start. Um, and then again, if we're gonna look at the GPUs and think about the ins and the out here, we'll wanna come to in here. So I'm gonna go out the reservoir to my in. And yeah, you know, like normally like I bend this and make these look all fancy. See, look, there's my fittings doing cool stuff. A little different than if you do it without. Uh, I don't, again, it doesn't look as clean, but it does do the job. Okay, so here, and this is something with my builds. A lot of times I just do two boom, I just do a straight here and I do a straight here, which really, I think the way I understand it isn't probably the way you'd want to do water cooling a GPU because when I do a straight pass through, like if we go straight through and then up and out, it makes it, the liquid could just go straight through that and not actually do, you know, go through the block and cool the GPU die. So really I think the most like thermally effective way to do this would be to take the outside of this GPU and then come over to the end. I know it's it's crazy and I could be wrong so if that's wrong uh, please someone chime in because that's kind of what I'm I understand I, I did a little bit of research and I know that's that's that makes sense to me that's that's how it would work so um, out you know go go up into this GPU go through the through the actual block then out up through this block and then out this side 
and into our CPU. So we come up here and again, it does not matter what side we come into the GPU that's or put into the reservoir. I'm just saying random component names at this point. I, where am I? Hello? Am I, am I, am I alive? And there you go. Except, you know, you got to put fluid in it. Otherwise things don't work very well. Uh, black clear. Sure. Whatever black clear is. Is it, is it black or clear? Uh, okay. Yeah. I don't really know. It is, I guess, black clear. Um, so yeah, there we go. That's a quick look at water cooling um, in this game. And obviously like you can get really complicated. In fact, I'll just show you really quick a build that has a more complicated water cooling setup that I built. Okay. So if anybody remembers this build, this was like the most beautiful computer I've ever made in this game. Um, and it has two water cooling loops. So this one, obviously you can see we have the two reservoirs. We have so many radiators in this computer. Uh, we've got one, a 360 rad in the front, a 360 rad up top. We've got a 360 rad here under this little shroud. We got two 360 rads back here, right? And so fortunately, the color coding that I have actually shows you how these loops work. So we've got blue for my Intel CPU that's being cooled as part of this loop. So we've got this reservoir here, this loop, which reaches around back. So there's two 360 rads around back that are cooling the CPU while three GPUs, <laughs> while three reservoirs as part of the green loop are cooling my two uh, water cool 2080 Ti's. So you can get more complicated with water cooling setups and do two loops. Uh, there aren't a lot of cases in this game that support two loops, mostly that support two reservoirs because that's really kind of the bottleneck. Um, but that's what that can look like if you really want to go ham. The Ragin Tech Enyo is an awesome case to do all the water cooling. It is ridiculous. Um, some people pointed out, I couldn't get the bottom radiator fans to hook up, and I couldn't either, bro. I just didn't tell you guys because I'm a jerk. <laughs> yeah, my notes been either. It's stupid. There's not enough fan headers on this motherboard. So, ha, you guys found me out. Good job. You found me out. Okay, so back to our original computer. There you go. You can see uh, everything's working. And uh, yeah, should do quite well thermally. So, Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. That was a really quick look at water cooling and how to do it in PC Building Simulator, as well as, you know, kind of real life. It's a lot harder in real life and a lot slower and bending tubes in real life is hard and not hard in this game. So um, yeah, hopefully it helps. And thanks so much for watching. And if you guys haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. See ya.